Prince Andrew again. The Mail broke the story last week that Andrew received payments totaling more than one million from a Turkish businessman, including a £750,000 wedding gift to Princess Beatrice. Prince Andrew denies any wrongdoing. A little earlier, Stephen Wright, who worked on the story, brought us up to speed with the details. The payments of more than £1 million to Andrew and his family were made by a man called Selman Turk. Uh, he's a Turkish former financier, banker, and at the moment he's an alleged fraudster as well. He gave Andrew uh, £750,000, according to court documents, in 2019. We understand that that money was to fund Princess Beatrice's wedding, but there are other payments as well. According to reports, uh, he, Andrew, and Selman Turk met through a controversial Libyan arms dealer uh, close, who was close to Colonel Gaddafi. There's no suggestion of any wrongdoing, no evidence of any wrongdoing by Andrew and his family in receiving these vast sums. But they are vast sums and a lot of questions remain unanswered about the wisdom of them receiving this money from Selman Turk and not asking more questions about where it came from. The origins of this money, according to court documents, is that it was money which belonged to a wealthy Turkish woman who now lives in London. Uh, she claims that uh, she was deceived by Turk and that money should not have gone to Andrew and his family. It's a court battle and more details, no doubt, will come out in due course. But Andrew's family involved because it's not only that he had contact with Selman Turk um, and that he received the money, but uh, Duchess of York received more than £200,000 uh, from, from uh, Selman Turk. Eugenie received money, uh, supposedly, allegedly for a birthday party, surprise birthday party for her mum. So they're sort of being dragged into it. Each member of Andrew's family have questions to answer. And uh, Eugenie's issued a statement saying she just, she understood the money for her mum's birthday party came to her uh, from a long-standing family friend. Duchess of York, uh, Sarah Ferguson, has, has uh, is issued a statement uh, as well. No suggestions she's done anything wrong, but it's murky and it's unwelcome headlines for Andrew uh, so soon after the Virginia Jufre affair. When the Daily Mail became aware of this explosive court case uh, last week, uh, we put a number of questions into Prince Andrew. We were told that he needed another 24 hours to answer the questions. By which time, the spokesman said he can't comment because of the ongoing legal action, legal proceedings at court. So that's his holding position at the moment. He's not commenting publicly. And, you know, my instinct is that this court case wrangle will go on for some considerable time. Let's bring in our panel now. Richard, now Andrew obviously denies any wrongdoing and paid back the £750,000, but my goodness, this kind of whiff follows him everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah. It's yet another weird story. Well, I've been following this story closely and uh, yes, he's denied it and paid back the money, but he hasn't given any sort of proper explanation. And why do you suddenly pay back £750,000? I mean, there's very strange aspects to it. This idea that the businessman won a People's Choice Prize, um, you know, at, his, uh, at Andrew's Pitch at the Palace Awards, and they said, oh, that was all above board. But other people who are at this event have said it was very strange at the time that they won this award. Um, but there just seems to be this pattern of large amounts of money coming from people and not too many questions asked. But I do think they need to address it. You can't just dismiss it as, oh, yeah, we've denied it and we paid the money back. You, you've got to address it in a serious way. Why is he taking this money and um, what's going on? I want to know how you just get to be given large sums of money. This is like something well, going terribly fixer. wrong in my career. He's yeah. a fixer. I mean, he's travelled around the world at the public's expense with a golfing tournament at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And he's met up with all sorts of what we could call baddies, rich baddies. And they would ask him for, um, for help to do something in the UK and then they would pay him. We had the same thing with Jeffrey Epstein. You know, he invited him 
to Windsor to a great party where five of the birthdays were held. Um, and he went to uh, for a shooting uh, afternoon. So, I mean, he does bring these people in, perhaps, and I would imagine, to get some benefit of it for himself. Now, the, the, sorry, the print, his finances have always been clouded in some mystery. Why are we not able to have more transparency, do you think? Well, essentially because, um, I mean, particularly now, because he's not um, sort of on the public payroll. He's not receiving any money. But we don't know. He will have to be supported by the Queen. He has no job anymore. So, you know, where is his money going to come from? Mm. Um, She'll give it to him privately, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, presumably the Queen will support Andrew privately. And, and when Prince Charles is king, I think it becomes even more awkward, frankly. It'll stop. I mean, I'm sure Charles won't want him to have any sort of role whatsoever. I mean, it's so uncomfortable, isn't it? So why are these people being invited to the palace? Is it, is it appropriate? No, of course not. It's yeah. not appropriate. Well, I think who we got, you know, the Queen not being her dutiful self, which she is 95% of the time, and actually giving in to Prince Andrew. He has a way of manipulating her and using her, I feel, to give him what he wants. And I don't think that she will, she, she will change while she's alive. But when, so, um, sorry, I was going to say, when Andrew started the pitch at the palace um, scheme, it did seem very worthwhile. It was basically getting, promising young entrepreneurs, getting them to meet up with people who had the money to finance them. And it seemed a very worthy scheme. So to then hear that these people involved actually were giving him money, mm. it really sort of does cloud the whole, the whole project. Yes. And yet again, here we are with all this sort of like speculation and all this mystery and this murkiness, and yet again, no answers. No, no. Yeah. I mean, we know he gets 20,000 a year. Um, pension from the Navy, <laughs> which will, won't even buy him uh, a watch. I mean, he's got a £150,000 <laughs> Patek Philippe or Philippe Patek, I'm not sure, um, watch. I mean, he lives on a very high level. And he, he was getting um, a quarter of a million a year when he was working for the Queen. So that's gone. But she's got oodles of money and I'm quite sure if he goes to her and you know poor me I can't have this and that she will give it to him he's got a whole range of cars hasn't he including I mean, well some... I for one am going to lose sleep wondering how Andrew will survive that's all we have time for in our YouTube version of the show today but for more royal news views and videos click the link on screen now and head over to mail plus I'll see you there